And this is what the chandelier is looking like right now. A lot different, isn't it? I've got three different layers of paint on here. Let's look a little bit closer and I'll try to explain to you what I did because I didn't film myself doing it. I guess I probably should have. But what I was going for um, was a distressed finish with mostly gray um, as the end result, a distressed gray, I guess you could say. So the first thing I did was I painted, I spray painted the entire chandelier. I flipped it over and painted the bottom, and then I flipped it up right side up and painted the top, and spray painted the entire thing with white spray paint. The next thing I did was I took just some random gray paint that I had lying around, and I dry brushed it all over the entire chandelier, top and bottom, all over it and I allowed that to dry. I didn't put a solid coat on there. Like I said, I just dry brushed it. In case you're not familiar with dry brushing, that's just a technique where you just barely dip the bristles of your brush into the paint, and then you wipe most of the paint off onto a rag or a paper towel, and then apply it to whatever it is you're painting. You can wipe it off if you want to, if you get it too heavy in one spot. Then I did the same technique using Annie Sloan chalk paint in French linen. That's my final coat, is the French linen. These little guys come off. So before I painted everything, I completely taped this up with painter's tape to protect it. And so these were painted separately from the rest of the chandelier, but they just slide right back on. You don't even know they're there. Also, when I painted the chandelier, I've, and I've done this before, I paint the chain and everything. And again, when I get to the end where the wires are, I wrap it all in painter's tape to keep paint off of that. Then you've also got this piece, this uh, ceiling cap, if you would, that goes up against the ceiling um, that the chandelier gets wired to, or covers up all the wiring for the chandelier. So it's also painted to match the rest of the chandelier. Now the final thing to do is to add these guys right here. Okay, I put all them together and next I'm going to show you how I made them. This is what we want the finished strand of beads to look like after they've all been beaded onto the thin wire. Um, and this is before they're painted. So I think they're pretty left natural, but I decided that I'm going to paint them to match the chandelier. And this is what I'm going to be tying um, onto the arms of the chandelier to give it a French country look to go with the rest of my uh, guest bedroom. So let me show you the supplies that I used to um, get this look. I used this package of just an assorted um, size of beads. This is a whole lot more beads than what I needed, but it's what they had. And it doesn't say on the package the specific sizes of the beads. Then I used these larger beads. These are two and a half centimeters. And I've already opened the package and used part of these, as you can see. Next, I used these beads. Um, they don't say what size they are either on the front. On the back, it says they're five millimeter. So just a bag of those. I used, now you might find this odd, but you'll see why I use these in just a few minutes. I used this string of beads. These are almost three and a half centimeters large. And then I used this wire to strand, string them all together with. This is 0 0.40 millimeters in width. It's very thin, very flexible. I'm using this Gorilla Clear Grip Glue. This stuff's great. It's not, it's kind of thick. It's not the thin, um, watery, like super glue type glue. So you'll kind of see how I use this in a minute and why I thought it was necessary. All of these things came uh, from my craft store and all the beads, um, the smaller beads came from the jewelry section of the craft store. Even this assorted container of beads came from the craft store. These two packages of larger beads came from the section of the craft store where they sell unfinished wood items. 
Okay, let me show you how I actually put a strand of these beads together. One of the issues that I was concerned about, and it took me a little while to figure out how to avoid, this is the large size of the bead that goes on the bottom of the bead strand. It's this one right here. I couldn't figure out how, when all was, when all was said and done, I was going to avoid having a piece of the wire come through the bottom of this and show on the outside of that, in other words, wrap around um, the outside of that, and I didn't, I didn't want to do that. So, my solution, and I don't know if it's the best one, was to buy these little beads right here at the jewelry department at the craft store, and had to be small enough, I was going to glue them into this hole so that they would disappear, okay? So the beads you buy have to be small enough to fit down into this hole. The way that I did that, I cut a piece of the jewelry wire, 12 inches long. I took one of those small beads and threaded it. I threaded it onto a piece of the wire. So you can see you've got a double piece of wire. There's my bead. When you're finished, make sure that the ends of your wire line up evenly. Then I put a dollop of the Gorilla Glue down into the inside of this, a generous dollop, not so much that it squishes out though. And when the glue is in there, I simply insert the bead in here, give it a little push, and allow it to dry. And then when I'm finished, this is what I wind up with. That bead, and if you can see it, it's down on the inside of that. The wire is coming out. That's going to allow me to string the rest of my beads on here, and that wire is not going to show. It's not going to be on the outside of this. Hopefully, that'll look good. Okay, now that the bead is glued down on the inside of this, let me tell you how I put the rest of it together. I used three of this size beads. I strung them on next, and I put both wires through the hole of the bead, strung it down on there. And then in this container of beads, there's looks like three different sizes of beads. I used one of the medium size ones, which is this one, and one of the smallest size, which is this one. I ended, I put one of the medium size ones on, and then I ended it at the top with the smallest one. All right, let me show you. This is where those strands of beads are gonna go. They're gonna be tied to the arms of this chandelier. There are eight arms on this chandelier. I'll back up a little bit so you can see them. And so I needed obviously eight strands of those little beads. I've got them attached temporarily using this wire. It's just twisted around. Again, that's another wire I would rather not show, but I could not think of a way around that. I'm hoping when I paint these, which I'm gonna do, I'm gonna paint them to match the rest of the chandelier. I'm gonna paint the wire and everything. So I'm hoping that when I'm finished and once the chandelier is hanging up on the ceiling, you won't even see this wire unless you're looking for it. And of course, I'll twist all this off, clip it, tie it neatly and stuff like that. So that's what we're after.